remembers when Ben Affleck was cast as the Batman and there was all of those memes going around saying, I bet you weren't glad it was this guy with pictures of Robert Pattinson. <sighs> yeah, guess we got the last laugh on that one. Anyway, let's talk about the film. I'm Berry Man and this is 10 Things Wrong With. The Batman is a 2022 American superhero film. It tells the story of Batman who's been fighting crime in Gotham City for two years, uncover corruption while pursuing the Riddler, a serial killer who is targeting Gotham's elite, but for what reason? When the film was released it did receive praise for the performances, the score, lots of things that were great about it including the story, however there was criticism towards the runtime. But what do I think is wrong with this film? Well let's discuss 10 things wrong with The Batman. Number 10. Lying No, I'm not saying the film lied to us. Um, I'm actually on about Robert Patterson lying. So Robert Patterson got the audition to play The Batman while he was doing rehearsals for Tenant. I have done that film as well, by the way. So to get out of it, he lies to the director of Tenant, saying he had a family emergency. Now this is the problem. The director of Tenant is Christopher Nolan. The one person you shouldn't lie to about Batman, because all Christopher Nolan turned around and said was, you're going for the Batman job, aren't you? Christopher Nolan knew before Robert Patterson. So yeah, lying to Christopher Nolan about Batman is not a good thing. I know it doesn't affect the film, but it's still wrong. Number nine, young Batman. Great. We have not got an origin story for once. Thank God for that. However, we still have a young Batman. This Batman has been around for two years. Now, as much as I don't mind this performance of Batman, we still want an older, grizzled, worn out, at the end of his tether Batman. We want to see that live action version. That's what we wanted to see when it was going to be Ben Affleck's version of Batman. But when he dropped out, they decided to pull the plug and put it back to a young Batman. We've had so many young Batmans. Give us an old one, please. We're getting bored of the same style Batman all the time. Number eight, killing. Don't worry, I'm not on about the bad guy killing people. I'm on about how the bad guy kills people. Especially at the beginning of this film, he goes up to the mayor, stands behind him, and then shouts before he kills them. Now you've snuck in all secretly. No one knows you're there and then you shout just as you do it. Why? He's got security downstairs, although that's another point of praise. Why didn't security hear the bad guy shouting or the blumps on the floor? But still, it's why shout before you're about to murder someone quietly? Doesn't really make sense. Number seven, you're not my father. Now, I did take a little bit of umbrage with this line. Bruce Wayne would never say that in a million years. Yes, granted, Alfred is not Bruce Wayne's father, but he's always raised him like a father, but with respect, always. And Bruce Wayne has always listened, may not have done what he was told, but he's always listened, there was always that respect. And I did feel the respect part wasn't quite there, and Getting Bruce Wayne to say, you're not my father, Alfred, I didn't quite like that line. It's so out of character for Bruce Wayne. Well, that's my opinion. Let me know what you think in the comments. Number six, Batmobile. What Batmobile? Out of all the Batmobiles you've ever seen, this is probably one of the worst ones. It's a glorified muscle car. I mean, to be fair, they were always glorified muscle cars, but at least they didn't look like glorified muscle cars. I mean, Michael Keaton's one was just cool. Hell, even the 1960s convertible was actually better than this thing, but this would have looked not out of place in a Mad Max film. I didn't, yeah, I didn't quite get this Batmobile. I didn't really like it. Number five, followers. The Riddler, he's a social media influence. He's big, he's huge, he has 500 followers. Say what? 500 followers and he's huge? 
Okay, annoyingly, that's more than what I've got, but also I do know the fact that I have, uh, out of 500 followers, 10% of people are gonna be actually properly following him. The others are just following him just for the sheer hell of it. 500 followers is not really that huge in the social media world. Hell, you can't get monetized on YouTube or, or TikTok until you get at least over a thousand followers. <sighs> yeah, I don't make many money out of this. But as I'm there, I'm also gonna point out that not many people who actually subscribe watch, most of the people who watch my videos aren't subscribed. So if that is one of you, please subscribe to my channel. Please. Should we get back to the film now? Bit of an idea. Number four, Bruce Wayne. Surprisingly, Robert Patterson did an amazing job as Batman. Really, I was surprised. I didn't think he would actually do it very well. The thing that was also surprising me is his performance as Bruce Wayne. Now, I'm not blaming Robert Patterson doing this because I've seen him before and he can do the traditional Bruce Wayne perfectly. End of. He would be fantastic as Bruce Wayne. But the writing of this film made Bruce Wayne a recluse, emo nobody. And it didn't flow on to how Bruce Wayne is. Bruce Wayne is flamboyant. He likes to be flamboyant and out there and all this because everyone then thinks, oh, he can't be the Batman. He's nothing. Batman's not like that. It's an act. But they didn't put that one through in this film. And as a result, I didn't really like Bruce Wayne. Number three, one at a time. I know a lot of films do this, but when there's loads of bad guys and one good guy, the bad guys take one at a time. Now, most of these bad guys in this film have guns. Why don't they all just open fire at the same time? But no, they do this stereotypical, one person goes up, gets their ass kicked, so the next one goes up and gets their ass kicked. Either all fire your guns, or all attack him at the same time. You know what this Batman is capable. Why bother taking the risk? No, just all go from. I mean, you might have still lost, and I wouldn't have picked it up, but still, you gotta try, because it's the only way bad guys are ever gonna beat the Batman. Number two, power up. Oh my God, Batman is a junkie. Seriously, towards the end of this film, he gives himself an injection to give him a power boost. <sighs> yeah, I didn't like that. Batman is his all natural. His strength, his agility, his muscles are all through hard work and training. He has trained his body to do all these things he can do. And then this Batman takes a shortcut and gives himself an injection to give himself a power up. Yeah, I didn't buy that. And I think that's against, that's like the no killing rule. No drugs, no killing, no guns. But this Batman, he likes his drugs. Number one, teasing. Oh, I'm not on about a post credit scene for this film, because this film didn't have one. I'm on about this film really teased me with the Joker being in the sequel. And I didn't quite like that. Yeah, seriously, why, why tease the Joker again? I mean, let's face it, we, the first two Jokers, Jack Nicholson, Heath Ledger, awesome. Mark Hamill's Joker over on the animated series, awesome. These are extremely high bars to actually uh, like try and overcome. Jared Leto's was not that good. Let's, you know, leave the Joker aside for a little bit. Let's leave him off. Batman has such a huge array of Rose Gallery. Go down the road with someone else. Let's not do the Joker again, please. Final thoughts. So what do I really think of this film? Well, ultimately, I was surprised by this film because for a film called The Batman, the Batman's in it. Well, obviously he's gonna be in it. But when you look at Christopher Nolan's Batman, Batman's not really in it that much. It's the same as Wonder Woman. In fact, it's a quite a common trope of superhero films where the actual superhero isn't really in the film that much and you concentrate on more on his alter ego. Well, not in this film, because the Batman is in this film more than the Christopher Nolan's trilogy all put together. I don't know if that's true, I'm making that up, but you do get that impression. You don't actually see Bruce Wayne that much in this film. And I kind of like that. I'm actually seeing the Batman. And the other thing I really enjoyed about this film was the fact that 
It wasn't an action Batman. This is going back to the 50s and 60s where the Batman was a detective. Because let's face it, that was his nickname back then. Before he had Robin, he was the detective. It's what Ra's al Ghul calls him, the detective. And this is why Robert Patterson pulled that off. He didn't need to say anything, walks into a room and he's looking around. And you can see it in his face that he's analyzing every little thing he sees. And that's an impressive, really impressive trick to do. Now, I was talking about Robert Patterson. I will confess that when Robert Patterson was announced as the Batman, I was actually quite skeptical. Now, I've already said, I think he would have been perfect as the stereotypical Bruce Wayne. I was very concerned about him performance as the Batman, especially as you've seen how he does like the dark brooding in the Twilight Saga. And I didn't really kind of like it back then, but I will put my hands up. I was wrong. He's a really good Batman. And I hope what they do with this Batman is they don't cram out like two, three sequels every other year. Leave it five years and then we'll have a Batman like he's been around for seven years. If we do a Robert Pat Patterson Batman every five years, then the fans will finally get what we've been after, an older grizzled Batman. But on this occasion, we've got the opportunity to actually see that journey as well. This is something that DC could do really, really well. However, I already know that they're rushing for a sequel and spin-offs and creating a whole new shared universe. That I don't think they should do. Slow down. You've actually got a really good Batman. You've got a really good group of cast. You've got a good director behind it and who really, really understands the whole character of Batman. Slow it down and let's go on a long journey with Robert Patterson and Batman together. That's my hope and dreams for this version of Batman. But that's enough about this film. What am I going to rank it? I'm going to be ultra nice this week. There are still some niggly things wrong with it. Yes, the wrong time. It's a little bit long, but it doesn't feel that bad, I don't think. So I'm actually going to give this an eight out of 10 berries. But that's my opinion. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. On to next week. Shall we do a video game sequel? Yeah, that's my clue for next week. If you want to know what I mean, come back next week. Until then, bye-bye.